So without further ado and rather unceremoniously, let's remove one of the drives from this NAS. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to do a very quick video to show you guys what exactly happens when a drive dies inside your QNAP NAS. So many of us buy a QNAP NAS for our data storage for home or business and do rely on something like RAID to ensure that we're protected from hard drive failure. Remember RAID is not a backup, it is a safety net that protects you from your data being lost in the event of drive failure. Not a backup, more of a safety net against hardware failure. So, for this test we're utilizing this 4-bay Rackdown NAS, but this will be the same output and the same result regardless of the NAS you use. The only thing that will differ is the performance levels. So, here we have a mapped network drive, that's a Windows mapped network drive of the shared drive on this QNAP. So on the right here, we've got the shared drive, I've given it the letter H, and here is the file on the NAS itself in their file station application. So if we look in TV shows here, we've got lots of episodes of stuff inside here. And again, if there is any lag, do bear in mind that is probably going to be my capture recording software because I'm not using an external uh, capture device for this. I'm using a PC that is recording this video. So if we go in here, once again, this is the map network drive and they're the same four files. Just to show that it all works and plays fine, let's go for this episode of The Thick of It. We're just going to watch a few seconds just to show it running from the NAS and show that it works fine. We'll just minimize there. I'm going to use VLC. Anyone that's ever watched the thick of it, great show, a lot of swearing, so we're probably going to turn that down. And again, this is running from the NAS via that mapped network drive. Now, right now, the drives inside this NAS, if we minimize that and close that, the drives inside this NAS are in a RAID 5 configuration. It's three drives. Each of the drives are 14 TB Seagate Ironwolves, which is always good to know. And they're in the RAID 5 configuration, which means that we can withstand one drive of hard drive failure. What I'm going to do is remove one drive and simulate a drive dying in this array to show you one, what happens, and two, how it affects you and your that access to your data without that third drive. So without further ado, and rather unceremoniously, let's remove one of the drives from this NAS. One drive is now removed. I went for bay one. So shortly we should start to see the NAS start alerting us that a drive has been lost. We may even hear a beeping that will be super annoying. So I'm just going to preempt that and see if we can turn that beeping off when it happens. But for now, the drive has been removed. The NAS has already started spinning up in the rear there and letting us know that the volume has been degraded. That means in degraded mode that the system is using parity that has been spread across those drives as well as the available storage to simulate your storage. Now this will affect system performance. If we go to the performance there, we can see that it's already let us know that the RAID group has failed and that RAM and CPU utilization are gonna go up gradually. What that means in real terms is that we can still access the data on this NAS. If we go back to that mapped network drive from earlier, we can play the exact same file. We play that and it will still be able to play the file. There may be a slight performance dip as you can see the frames per second has dropped. But we can still access all the files on this NAS even though we've lost one drive in the array which is you know, pretty impressive given this was spread across three drives. And again, if we look, we'll be able to check each of the drives individually, and now the beeping of hell has begun. So what we need to do now is reintroduce a new drive, because now, even though the RAID group has got a degraded symbol and we can still access our data, what happens if we lose one of our drives? Because as we can see, if we go to drive two, it's in good health, Drive 3 is in good health, but Drive 1, the drive that we've pulled, is no longer found, and it is considered broken. Now, once I reinstall this drive back into the device, it won't see the data that was on the disk. It will treat it like a brand new drive. So if we install this drive back, and now it will notice that the new drive has been added in Bay 1. 
and it's trying to find out more information about the disk and now it will go to the trouble of finding out if we can use this disk to rebuild the raid. So we'll go back to our raid group and now we're going to start rebuilding our raid. The disk has been found. And now RAID is, the RAID is going to begin once again to resynchronize. And as you can see, the RAID is rebuilding. Now, based on the RAID level that you use, be it a RAID 5, a RAID 6, or something a lot easier like a RAID 1 or a RAID 2, this RAID, the amount of time it will take will differ. In the case of this drive, I reckon we are looking between 6 to 8 hours for the RAID rebuild. But as you can see, not only were we able to still access our data even though we'd lost the drive, but the reinstallation of a drive in the QNAP NAS was incredibly straightforward. I'm not going to make you wait around for the RAID rebuild, but this has been what happens when a drive dies in your QNAP NAS. If you've enjoyed this, do let me know, and don't forget to click like and subscribe to support this channel and help me make more videos to help you. See you later, and cheers for watching.